Hello students, welcome to the GATE 2021 Mathematics are there. Today we will discuss about these four questions 23, 24, 32 and 55 which was related to the LPP. So this question number 23 is of the one marks, 24 is again one marks while this 32 and 55 is of two marks each. So you can see there is, you can easily get a six marks within a two or three minutes after solving these four questions. So this is the question number 23rd. You can see this, the question is around the optimal solutions of the dual. You have the primal problem, then your target is to find the optimal solution of the dual. What is the question? I, we will uh, dis, uh, find the solution within a very quickly manner, but, but firstly we will see what is the objective of these questions are there. Question number 24 is related to the basic feasible solutions. It is called as the BFS and you have to find the sum of these elements are there when you have the LPP is given to you. Question number 32 is related to some again problem are there, then you have to find whether it's optimal solution, whether it's a feasible solution of the dual, whether the dual has the one feasible solution and so on. That is a primal dual relationship we need them. And the question number 55 is of the two marks again, then you have to find the optimal solution of the dual when the primal problem is given to you. So these are the four questions, how you can solve them all these questions within a one minute tricks are there. So we will discuss this in this video. Myself, Dr. Gar, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute, India. You can simply contact me through my this email IDs for finding the various previous year papers solutions. Now, how you can solve this question about 23rd are there. So remember that there is no need to write the dual of the LPP or whatever are there. You have to take the concept what, what is the concept behind this question? How you can solve this within a one minute tricks are there? So as what is the first trick behind that? Whenever there is a question related to the optimal value of the dual. So we all know that the optimal value of the dual and the optimal value of the primals are same always. So what is the meaning of that? Whatever the optimal value of this problem subjected to these constraints, the optimal value of this is the same. So it means I have to solve this problem. How you can solve this problem? You can simply see, uh, easily see that this is a simplex. Uh, there is no need to write the simplex method. You can easily solve with the help of graphical method. So like say the first one is this is my six, this is my three. So the first line is my here. Second line is when minus one and then it's a plus one. This is my minus x one plus x two is one. And the third one is three comma three. So you can see this is my three comma three. So which one is a feasible area is? This is my feasible area. So I called as this is O, A, B, this point is my here, This there is no point of intersection between them, this is my C. So what is the coordinate of the O? This is nothing but the 0, 0. What is the coordinate of A? This is the line of the intersection, this is nothing but my 0, 1. What is the coordinate of B? We will solve them, we will see the coordinate of here is this. Now how you find this point of intersection? This is nothing but the line of the intersection of the minus x1 plus x2 is 1 and this line that is x1 plus x2 is nothing but my 3. So can you find the value of the x1 and x2 both? Yeah, you can simply them, you can add them, you will get x2 as the my 2 and once you will substitute here, you will get x1 as my 1. So these are my coordinates. Now corresponding to this, what is the value of the z? That is 2x1 plus this is my 0. What is the value of this is my 3? What is the value of this is my 8? What is the value of this is my 6? So which one is the maximum? here. So this is the primal optimal solution. So since the primal optimal solution, the dual optimal solution have the same. So the answer of this problem is my 8 and you will get as a 1 marks a very simple manner. So you can see there is no need to solve the dual of this problem. You have simply solve the graphically. Look at the another example is there. So now you have to find the basic feasible solution. Remember that whenever they are asking about the basic feasible solution, we always try to write the one trick. You have to find the number of the variables, n is my number of the variables in the problem and you have to find the number of the constraints in the problem. I denoted as a m. So you can see in this problem how many variables are there? 5. x1, x1, x2, s1, s2, s3, there are 5. Number of the constraints are my 3. So therefore, what is the number of the uh, number of non-basic solutions. Always remember number of the non-basic solutions are n minus m that is my 2. So it means that 2 variable out of these 5 must be 0. So you can see x1, s1, s2 and s3 these are only unknown. 
because this value is given to you as a x2. So out of these four variables, uh, out, uh, what is the n minus m2? So out of these variables, the two values must be zero. So it can be either x1 or s1 are zero. It can be s1, s2 are there. It can be s1, s3 and so on. How you can find these values are there? There's a very simple tricks about that. You always skip the x1 because x1 is a decision variable. Try to find this one. So let's see if s1 and s2 both are zero. So let's assume s1 and s both are zero. So if you substitute here, what is the value of the x1? S2 is give, x2 is given to you as a two. So this is a six, this is zero, this is 12. What is the value of the x1? x1 is nothing but my three. Similarly, if you substitute in here, this is my two, this is my zero. So what is that? x1 is nothing but my, is my one. Are they equal? No, it means this will not be possible. So now we will consider the second case. I assume x2 and s3 are zero. So we can see if I substitute here, can we get the same value? You can see x1 is my one from this because x2 is my two. And if you substitute here, again, you will get this value as a one. So what is the meaning of that? I need the two as a non-basic variable whose value is zero. So therefore, in x, s2 is my zero, s3 is my zero, x2, I already know that. Now I can substitute, now we can get the required answers. Now we can, what will happen? x1 is my one. One, you will substitute the value of here. What is the value of the s1? This is my two, this is my six. Two plus six is my eight. What is the value of the s1? This is nothing but my four. Now you can substitute the value here. Four plus one plus zero plus zero. The right answer is my five. You can easily get the one mark from here. Remember, whenever there is a basic feasible solution, you always apply this trick, n, m, n here. Look at this question number 32 are there. How you can solve this question number 32? You have to think about that, which of the following is not true. That's again a very simple, whatever the statement is there, how many, how length is there, there is no worry about that. What is given to you? This is a feasible solution of the P. So, and P C1 plus Q C1, that is the objective function. and let all the feasible solutions of this satisfy. What is that? This is my primal objective function. It means if I consider this as a Z of the primal. So what is the meaning of that? This is given to you. What is the meaning of that? This means this is a bounded. This is a bounded. That is a Z is bounded also. And this is a feasible reason of there. So you know that what is the fundamental theorem of the LPP? Every bounded LPP has an optimal solution. So it means this is my correct option. Every LPP has an optimal solution. That is also true. So it means this is true, but we need not a true. So this option is correct. And you can see that uh, since one, once it is a bounded, so we can get all obvious that we will get an optimal value also. So it means the primal has an optimal value. So once the primal has an optimal value, can the dual also has optimal value? Yes, dual also have the optimal value. So once the dual has also optimal value, what is the meaning of that? It means there exists at least one feasible solution because if there is a feasible solution, then only you can get the optimal value. So it means if the primal has an optimal solution, it, it implies that dual also has optimal solution. If the dual has an optimal solution, what is the meaning of that? It means it has at least one feasible solution. That option is also true because the primal the dual of the P has also has at least one feasible solution. That is also true. Now out of these two, one is not true. Now you can see this is the feasible solution of the dual. Do you remember that any of the result which work on the feasible solution of the dual and the primal? Do you remember that? Yes, very good. This is a weak duality theorem. What is the weak duality theorem is that whatever the problem is minimization, the answer is always be greater than or equal to maximization. That's the weak duality theorem suggested. So which one is the minimum? Since the primal is my maximum, so the dual has the minimum value. Dual is the value of the value of the jet of the dual is greater than of the primal at feasible point. So now, now it is given that y1, y2 are the feasible solutions. So what is the objective function of the dual? So you can see that this is the b1, b1, y1 plus b2, y2 plus b3 y3 that is a minimization of the dual is my objective function so this right hand side left hand side is my here 
this now is greater than or equal to what is the primal feasible solution so it is given to you as p and q are the feasible solution of the primal so what is the objective function p c1 plus p c2 at uh, p c1 plus q c2 and answer is given to you as a 6 so it means the right hand side value is my 6 so what is that is this this is also true by using the weak duality theorem so what is the meaning of that which of the following is not true so right answer is my b is my correct answer of this problem that's so you can see very simple task are there so remember there are the two concepts one is the fundamental theorem of the lpp it is bounded then it's optimal optimal of the primal if it is a primal optimal then it means the dual optimal dual also optimal solution once the dual has an optimal solution it means that there is at least one feasible solution must be there and whenever there is a feasible solution a relation between the feasible feasibility you have to use the weak duality theorem look at the last question is here so which of the following is the lpp as an and you have to find the optimal solution of the dual again since the optimal value of the dual and the optimal value of the primal have the same thing now how you can solve them again if you remove them as a equality so you have to add as a plus s1 plus s2 plus s3 are there what is given to you x1 is given to you 11 by 3 x2 is given to you 2 by 3 x3 is given to you 0 again what is the n is number of the variables how many variables you have in the primal problem 3 and 3 are the slacks variables are 6 how many constants are there 3 so what is the non basic variables are there n minus m is 3 it means 3 values must be 0 we have the one values b so it means your optimal solution like here x1 x2 you know that this is 11 by 3 this is 2 by 3 you need to find this variable and the corresponding non zero value so it means out of this s1 s2 and s3 two values are zero because one we already know that s3 is my zero so it means this point is either as a s1 either as a s2 or either as a s3 how you can find that so let's assume that if you substitute this value in the first equation so x3 is my zero the what is the first equation is my there 2x1 4x2 plus s1 is my 10 so what is that x1 is 11 by 3 x2 is 2 by 3 what is the answer is that this is my 22 plus 4 by 3 plus s1 is my 10 so what is the value of the s1 so you can see this is my 11 22 4 to your 8 sorry so this is a 30 by 3 10 so what is the meaning of that s1 is my 0 similarly if you substitute in the second equation x1 minus x2 x3 is my 0 plus s2 is my 3 so once you will substitute here 11 by 3 minus 2 by 3 9 by 3 that is a 3 so s2 is also my 0 it means this value must be of your x3 so what is the value of the s3 you can substitute in here so 2x1 that is a 22 by 3 plus 6 by 3 plus s3 is my 11 so what is the value of the s3 this after the calculation what is the value you can get as a here so this is my 5 by 3 now your target is to find the value of the p plus q plus r what is the p plus q r this is the optimal value of the dual how you can find that you can simply use the complementary slackness theorem that's a very simple there is no need of them otherwise what is the meaning of that x1 x2 and s3 these are my optimal values prime so these are zero the corresponding y3 will be zero what is the complementary slackness theorem is if the slack variable is present then the corresponding yi will be zero if xi will be present the corresponding equality will be there in the constraints so since s3 is a non-zero value this is a 5 by 3 so what is the meaning of that the y3 must be zero so the one y3 is that is r is zero so r will be zero so now my right answer is p plus q now how you find the p plus q the second x1 is present that the first so first constraints corresponding to the dual that is that 2y1 plus y2 plus 3y3 is nothing but my the first value that is a 4 second constraint is my 4y1 minus y2 plus 3 of the y3 is nothing but my 1 that is a coefficient of the x1 and x2 y3 is my 0 now you can solve them if you add them what is the value of the y1 so y1 is nothing but my 5 by 6 if you uh, sub if you substitute y1 is 5 by 6 here you will get this value as a 14 by 6 this is nothing but my p this is nothing but my q because p and q r is the optimal value so now what is the p plus q plus r r is my 0 so this is nothing but my 19 by 
six. You can round up up to the two decimal places in your examination. So this is the way you can solve this. L LPP questions are there. Remember again, whenever there is an optimal solution, some values are given to you. You have to apply this simple shortcut tricks are there. So I hope you can learn this all question of the LPP in a very simple manner. And this is of the two marks, no negative markings are there. We will solve some other questions in our next class. Till then, you can simply follow this link for finding the various videos related to this gate or others competition exam. Till then, best of luck.